In today's video, we'll be going over everything that you need to consider when choosing the right niche for your blog. Choosing the right niche is one of the most important decisions that you're going to make even before you start writing content for your blog. You can either set your setup for failure or success by the niche that you choose to get into. And choosing the right niche can help you save a lot of time and money. I'll be going over my experience and the things that you need to consider when choosing a niche. And hopefully I can steer one of you guys in the right direction and set you up for success before you even launch your first blog post. And stick around because we're going to reveal a website that's making over $30,000 per month in a niche that anyone can get into. So before you start researching and thinking about a niche, you need to first decide what type of blog is this going to be? Are you going to create a passion blog around the things that you really love and build a community around that? Or are you looking to create a blog that will be a business for you that's going to bring in profits each month? Now, of course, you can have both of those things, but at the beginning, you wanna sort of think about what type of blog that you wanna create. So to distinguish between these two types of blogs, within a passion blog, you'll choose a topic that you really like and you really enjoy. And this can be something that you can talk about all the time. This can be something that you've been trained in or you have a lot of experience in. And while the goal of that blog will be to make money as well, you also have a deeper meaning or a deeper why as to why you're trying to build that community. So for instance, you can be a stay at home mom who wants to create a blog that talks about the many ways in which stay at home moms can monetize and make money online. But for the most part, writing content for this sort of blog will come easy to you. And this will have a deeper mission rather than just making money or being a side hustle. The second type of blog is what I call a profit blog. Now, this is a blog in which you may not be an expert in the field, but you're able to find people who are experts to write for this blog. And you're naturally going to build a community and bring value to that community, but you're more focused on monetizing and making money from this blog. So essentially, you're running the blog like a real business and you're focused on making profits each month. And as I mentioned earlier, of course, you can have an overlap between a passion and a profit blog because there's many blogs out there that builds a community and has a deeper why, but also makes a lot of money. But this is a good way to sort of think about what sort of blog you wanna create. So now that you have a better idea of the type of blog, you need to choose between creating a niche site and a broad site. Now, if you're creating a niche site, then you're going to stick to one topic specifically. So for instance, bestgardenhose.com or bestoutdoorequipment.com. And in a blog like that, you'll be discussing one specific topic. And the pros of that is that you're able to create topical authority. And the problem with niche sites is that you'll eventually restrict yourself as to how many people will be visiting your blog because you'll only be within a specific topic and there's only that amount of people that will visit your blog or that are looking for that topic online. And just before we continue this video, I wanna let you guys know about an AI copywriting tool that we use that's called Jarvis. If you're a blogger that creates content, this is an amazing, amazing tool that allows you to create blog posts a lot quicker. And the way to use it is very simple. You just click the template, and once you give the AI some input as to what you're writing about, all you have to do is then click Compose and the AI will start writing based on what your input is. So this is a really, really invaluable tool that we've used in our business to help us write blog posts a lot quicker. We'll leave a five day trial below this video so that you can start using Jarvis and see how you can use it within your business. Now a broad site is a generic broad domain such as livefreeforever.com but the idea is is that it's a generic domain so that you can write on multiple topics. Now what I found is that if you just create a broad site and you write about multiple different topics within one niche then I do find that it's harder to get those blog posts indexed and to start ranking for keywords because Google really relies on topical authority, especially 
when you're a new website. So the approach that I take is creating a hybrid site. So a hybrid site is essentially, again, just creating a generic broad domain, but instead of writing on multiple topics within your niche, you're going to choose a specific topic and you're going to write as many articles and informational blog posts as you can on that topic. So let's say I'm starting out a website on cooking. So cooking is going to be my niche and within cooking, I'm going to talk about gluten-free meals, keto meals and vegan friendly meals. But when I'm starting out my website, I'm not going to write five articles on gluten-free and then five articles on keto and then five on vegan. Instead, I'm going to create topical authority by writing as many articles as I can about gluten-free recipes. So I can talk about the best sugar-free, gluten-free recipes. I can talk about the best desserts that are gluten-free. I can talk about the best post-workout meals that are gluten-free and so on and so forth. But the idea is, is that I'm choosing a topic within that niche and I'm establishing authority. Now, what will happen is that first, I'll be able to rank for a lot of keywords a lot quicker. And secondly, I'll be able to get a targeted audience into my blog post. So now that you have a better idea of how to think about creating your blog and how to approach writing content for your blog, now it's time to think about what niche you wanna get into. So I'm going to try to show you some very unique and different ways that I haven't seen online that you can use right now to help you find a good niche to get into. And the first is by doing some simple reverse engineering. And we're going to be doing research assuming that you're looking to create a blog and to turn it into a real business for profit. Now, even if you're doing a passion blog as well, these methods will work. So the best way to figure out whether or not a niche will actually make you money is to find people and see how much money they're making within your niche. And the best way to do this is to head over to Google and search up income reports, blogging income reports, list of blog income reports. And any one of these variations, if you search it up, any variation of those keywords will get you a bunch of different income reports that you can take a look at. And right here, if you take a look at it and you scroll down, you'll be able to see over 50 blogs and see exactly how much they're making per month. So just from going through this list, you'll have a great idea of how much different niches are making. And the cool thing about these niches, for instance, if you were thinking about getting into the parenting niche, right, you can head over to this website and you can see exactly the breakdown of their income. They're literally telling you how much money they're making, where it's coming from, and how many people are going to their website. And you can then even go through their website and see what sort of content they're creating. And again, just go through these lists and if you see any niche that you're interested in or any niche in which you have experience in, just go ahead and take a look at their website to see where they're making their money from. As we can see, most of their income comes from Ad Thrive. So what that means is they're placing ads on these websites and they're making over $1,400 per month and that's totally passive. And if you wanted to get into the traveling niche, again, I can just go through this blog income report and I can see how many people um, or how many page views this website gets. And I can also see where the money came from as well. So as you can see, just by doing one quick Google search, you get so much data on a niche and it helps you really narrow down as to which niche you wanna get into. And you wanna keep in mind when you're going through these websites and you're looking at how much money they're making per month, you don't just wanna take that as face value because some of these websites have been in business for a very, very long time and that's the reason why they've built up an income. So you wanna get a realistic expectation of how much work and how much time it would take you to get to these numbers. So an easy way for you to do so is by copying the URL. And I use Ahrefs, which is the best keyword research and website analytic tool. It's a little pricey, but your niche selection is so important that I highly recommend that you get a subscription just to do that research. 
You could even get a free seven day trial and for seven days, really hone in and try to find your niche for $7. And once you're on Ahrefs, I'm going to paste that domain and I'm going to remove the URL. So I wanna make sure that it's the full domain and this is going to do an analysis of that website. And as you can see, this is a little snapshot of how that website is doing. Um, right now it says zero organic keywords or traffic. I think there's an issue there, not too sure, but that doesn't matter right now. What we're trying to see is we're trying to see how old is this website? So as you can see, this website has been in business or been online for at least five years. And obviously something happened here. That's why it died down. But for five years, they were working, putting out content and building an audience to get to that mark of how much they're making per month. So again, that's great to keep in mind because you'll have a better idea of how long it'll take you to start making some real money. Another variation of this method is to search up best and whatever niche you're thinking of and blogs and just load up a couple websites and take a look at the blogs that they feature. And usually the blogs that they feature would be some of the bigger players within that niche. And we're gonna copy the URL and we're gonna paste it in here. And as you can see, not all of the blogs and actually most blogs wouldn't do an income report. So a lot of people are very reserved when it comes to sharing numbers um, and how much they're making from their blog. So if you do the blog income report method, you will find or get an idea, but it wouldn't tell you exactly how much all of these blogs are making. So a way to get a better idea of how much money the bigger blogs are making is to then copy the URL from the website and head over to Ahrefs. And then again, we're going to paste it in here and just paste the URL of any of the bigger blogs that you find. And from here, we'll be able to see how much traffic they're getting per month. And this is usually always off. You can almost guarantee that they're getting more traffic than this. And most importantly, we'll be able to see the traffic value here. So this shows us how valuable the traffic is that they're getting. So if they were to put ads on this website, that's an approximate amount of how much this blog would make. So that's not too bad. As you can see, this is almost a thousand dollars that they're making if they were to put ads on it. And that doesn't obviously account for affiliate income or for sponsored posts or for sales from their own product. And we can see that this website has been online for a couple of years now. So again, you just want to keep that in mind. Another way to use Ahrefs to help you find more websites within a niche is you can head over to the Keywords Explorer and what you want to do is enter a parent keyword for or a broad keyword for the niche that you're thinking of getting into. So if I'm creating a food blog, then I can search up keto and let's see what comes up. So as we can see, we had a lot of search volume, but we want to head over to matching terms. And for matching terms, we'll be able to see all of the related keywords when it comes to keto. So as you can see already, this is a pretty big market because we have a surge volume of over 15 million and over 600,000 keywords that are related to keto. Now, if you're doing research, what you want to do is be able to compare apples to apples. So what that means is if I went into the keto market, there's no way that I would be able to rank for any of these keywords. The reason is, is that the keyword difficulty is way too high. So in order to filter this is I head over to keyword difficulty and I'm going to put the max keyword to be eight. So what that means is these keywords are going to be a lot easier for me to be able to rank for. And these would be much easier to rank for, but also the total volume is over 1.6 million, which means that there's a, still a lot of people that are searching this up, even if I just targeted these easy to rank for keywords. And you can see this is over 15,000 keywords. So you wanna make sure also when you're doing your research that you have enough search volume and enough topics within that niche for you to write on. So I'm gonna head over to any one of these keywords and I'm going to open the keyword and it shows me the search volume, how difficult it would be to rank for. But what I'm most concerned with is the SERP overview. And what I want to do is go through the SERP overview and I want to find the newest website that's ranking for this keyword or for any keyword within my niche. 
as you can see, if the domain rating is over 50, then you can almost guarantee that this website is pretty old and has built up authority over time. So I wanna see if as a new website, I can actually rank for these keywords and I wanna take a look at newer websites within this niche to see what they're writing about and how much traffic they're getting and if they're making any money. So these two websites are a perfect example. So I'm gonna open them and I can already see that they have ads on their website. So that's a good sign because they're probably making some money from these ads. And I'm gonna head back to the site explorer. I'm gonna paste that URL that I just found and I can see that they're ranking for over 45,000 keywords with over 50,000 traffic and their traffic value is 34,000 per month. Now, this is probably less, but again, this is a great indication of whether or not a new website can actually start ranking within this niche. Now, most importantly, if I go over to the organic search, I can see that this is a fairly new website. So this website is about a year and a half, already has over 50,000 organic traffic, and it's valued at over 34,000. So this is a great site. And if I was looking to get into the keto niche, then this would be a great indicator that I could actually get into this market and start making some money fairly quickly. Another great tool that you can use to find niches is to use Google Trends. And the way to use this is by thinking about what around you is very popular right now or what do you think in the future is going to be very popular. So just use your intuition and your observation skills and think about what has been most popular recently and where do you think the world is going? And you just wanna search those things up within the Google Trends and you'll be able to take a look at the trends over time. So as we can see, Home Workout had a big jump in March when there were uh, lockdowns, but then it sorta of dropped and it sorta of, um, stabilized to its um, original point. So maybe this wouldn't be a best search term to look into. Now, on the other hand, we see that financial technology or fintech is becoming a very popular and once we search it up on Google Trends, we can clearly see that this trend is going upwards. So just from using Google Trends, we can see that there's a clear uptrend of fintech and the popularity is definitely increasing and this is for the United States. So maybe we can take a look at this and consider creating a blog around fintech, but you never want to take one piece of data or information and base your decision on that. You need to dig a little bit deeper and do some more research. So what I would do is I would head over to Ahrefs and I'd paste fintech and just sort of see what sort of search volume we're getting. So again, we see that upward trend and I can see that the total volume is over 290K. So obviously not as much as keto, but there's a lot of keywords here. And let's say if we do a keyword difficulty is up, up, up to eight, we do see that there are some keywords, but again, the search volume isn't too high. And that kind of makes sense because this is sort of an emerging market. Right now, the search volume isn't high, but in the future, it could be. So in summary, when choosing a profitable niche, you want to first reverse engineer. You need to find blogs that are actually making money within your niche, figure out how they're doing it, how many posts they've created, the age of the site, and where are they making money from? Is it ads? Is it affiliate marketing? Or is it any other services? You also want to use Ahrefs or any other keyword research tool. And I highly recommend that you use a very good tool to search the niche ideas and figure out the total search volume and the amount of blog topics that are available for that niche. And you wanna make sure that you're using that keyword difficulty to reduce the difficulty of the keywords so that you'll actually have a chance to rank for those keywords and that there'll be a lot of keywords that you can actually start writing on. Then you wanna analyze the big players in the niche to see what's the maximum amount that you can make within this niche. But most importantly, and you wanna find newer blogs that are less than two years old and has been able to build a lot of traffic and rank for a lot of keywords and make a decent amount of money within two years. If you find that there's many blogs 
that are fairly new that are able to rank and start making money, then that's a really, really good sign that this is a good niche for you to get into. I hope that you enjoyed this video, but most importantly, I hope that you're one step closer to finding a profitable blogging niche. If you like this video, then I ask that you give us a big thumbs up and that you subscribe for more videos. Until next time, stay well.